The G-Story GS-T173, an ultra-thin and lightweight portable gaming monitor that has features that can compete with most gaming desktop monitors out there, which is quite impressive for a portable monitor. But is it any good? We'll find out in this video. But before we begin, let's do a quick unboxing. Okay, let's go through a rundown of the specs. It's a 17.3 inch display with 1080p resolution. It can go up to 165Hz refresh rate with 1 millisecond response time. It has HDR and it's an IPS panel and it's compatible with G-Sync and FreeSync. I don't know about you guys, but I really like the sound of those specs. Not bad for a portable monitor. Portable monitors have definitely come a long way, especially portable gaming monitors like the last 17.3 inch monitor I reviewed. That was also by G-Story. The only difference with the last one, it was only 120 hz refresh rate. It had a TN panel and it was super thick. I mean, look at it compared to this year's model. It's amazing how thin they've made it and how they've managed to pack all that tech into this slim design. And just for more perspective, even the thinnest part of the monitor is thinner than my smartphone. And with the protective cover on, it's just about the same size. The thickest part of the monitor with all the I.O. and controls is only slightly bigger, but it's really impressive how thin the display is. I guess one of the downsides to having it this thin is that if you was to put this in a bag with any hard objects, it probably wouldn't last as it will most likely break. I did email G-Story about this and recommend that they design a hard case to go with their monitors because it would be great if you could put it in your bag with other hard objects knowing that it will be fully protected so hopefully they'll make one soon. The protective magnetic cover that comes with the monitor is actually really good. It's well designed because it's also a stand. It's very slim and you can easily attach the monitor to it via the magnets and it holds very well. It has a suede kind of material feel to it and I really like the way you can seamlessly fold the cover into a stand. It adds a bit of elegance to the design although I do question the durability of the protective magnetic cover as it's quite thin and the material on the outside is quite soft and I would imagine over time it can possibly wear out but who knows. The other thing is that this monitor relies on that protective cover as a stand as there are no mounting holes on the back to hold this monitor up so you would have to look after that protective cover slash stand. The monitor itself is well designed with slim bezels all round apart from the bottom bit. Overall the monitor looks sleek and minimal with only the bottom back bit protruding this is where the main board is kept. On the side, you have ports for a headphone jack, two USB-Cs that you can use to power the monitor, but only one can transmit video. Next to it, you also have a mini HDMI port and a micro USB. On the other side, there's this tiny button that you can use to control the on-screen display menu. I tried using it, but I found it a bit fiddly, hard to use and a bit slow, so I would stick to using the remote. The display is an IPS panel with a colour accuracy of 99% sRGB and just by looking at it, the colours look nice. I can definitely see myself spending a lot of time watching movies and TV shows on Netflix and videos on YouTube and just general web browsing as the display is clear and the text is sharp. If you want to use it for video editing, I can actually recommend it as the colour accuracy is pretty good, especially if you are creating content for YouTube. For any professional work that requires colour grading, 
then I would suggest maybe calibrate the monitor to get the colors as accurate as possible. But out of the box, the default colors work great for me in terms of creating YouTube videos. Only downside is the resolution. Normally I would work either on a 2K or 4K monitor to fit more windows on a display. But surprisingly, at 1080p, I can actually work well on it as there is enough space to edit on on the display. For console gaming on this tiny monitor, it's a lot of fun as I can see myself playing a game with this monitor set up on a small desk or coffee table as it creates an intimate gaming session. And you can easily pack up the screen and put it away after playing. So it's definitely great for that kind of scenario. For PC gaming, this monitor is a beast. At 165Hz refresh rate, with G-Sync or FreeSync turned on, I didn't notice any screen tearing or delay. And remember, it's an IPS panel, so the colors look great. Check out this little kill streak I managed to get on Call of Duty. Not too bad if I say so myself. What did you guys think of my skills? What's also not so bad is the audio, well the speakers. They're nothing groundbreaking as you would expect from monitors, even more so portable monitors, but they're not bad either. Let's have a listen. I actually think they sound okay. What do you guys think? There's a couple of things to note when using this monitor. If you only use one USB-C cable to connect to the monitor, then you'll only get about less than 10% brightness, as I think the reason for this is that the monitor automatically overrides the settings to consume less power, and that's even when your PC or laptop power cable is plugged in. The screen is also not anti-glare, so using it where there is direct light or sunlight on the display will cause glare, so be sure not to place it opposite harsh lighting. And lastly, I found the menu system to be really slow when controlling it with the remote. It just takes ages to adjust any of the settings, maybe that's something they can fix, who knows. One feature I really like is the screen rotation. When you turn the display on its side, it automatically switches to a vertical desktop making it great for viewing content like reading news articles. Or if you're a developer, having an extra screen in a vertical orientation to write code can better your workflow experience, as you can easily scroll up and down to view your code. But my favorite use for this vertical orientation is for video editing. If you're someone like me who normally overshoots and has loads of clips to go through, I like to display them in this orientation so that it's easier for me to find the clips I want and scrub through them to the exact bit I want to use. It's great. Another thing I mentioned earlier on is the color accuracy. It's not perfect, and for professional work, it will need calibrating. But if you compare the colors from my monitor to my 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's pretty close. And like I said before, the colors are accurate enough to edit things like a YouTube video. So to sum it up, this is probably the best portable monitor I've used so far as it has ticked so many boxes. Sure, it's not perfect, but it's great for what I need it for. 165 Hertz with G-Sync and FreeSync for gaming, great colors for content creating, and overall, it's well designed. But guys, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Is a portable monitor something you would use? Would you use it for anything else? And what would you like to see from portable monitors in the future? So that's it for this video, guys. If you liked any of the products featured in this review, there are links to them in the video description below. 
And if you like this video, smash that like button to help support the channel. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on a new video. That's it from me guys, I'm Andy Django. thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.